Hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of Tenlo's Office Hours. In this program, we are going to pick a topic and set up the situation around the topic as it relates to our clients, to generating leads, to being good marketers that support sales. And then we wanna hear from you. What are the opportunities and the challenges that exist around this topic? And what are some solutions that we can all start to use to make progress towards easing tension in the sales funnel, increasing engagement and uh, increasing conversion or whatever your goals happen to be. So just today, we had a fantastic conversation with Paul Reitzer of Marketing AI Institute. And he shared with us some examples of AI applications we can all start using to accelerate our sales pipelines. We covered prospecting, we covered engagement and content and closing. So I think you're really gonna enjoy um, today's office hours. And if you have a question and you're here live, go ahead, throw it in the chat and we'll answer it on the spot. And thanks for joining. All right, let's get started. Uh, Cheryl, I think that you have the first questions from the conversation we had about marketing and AI. Uh, you wanna kick it off? Yes, absolutely. Um, this first question that just came in is one I can personally really relate to. It's, do you need to know all about AI in order to reap the benefits of it? So like, I personally don't consider myself a very technical person. Uh, so when we talk about technology, like AI it can be a little intimidating. So how much does someone really need to know about what's happening in the back end to really benefit from AI and marketing? Yeah, that is a great question because I feel like there are a lot of feelings and emotions around AI. Either you think it might replace jobs, you think it's sort of a waste of time and not proven out yet, or you think you have to have some skills in order to leverage it. And um, really, none of those things are true. So one, you know, AI doesn't replace jobs. It creates superhumans. So machine learning, which powers the logic that gives us AI, does a better job than we can at identifying patterns very quickly. And it doesn't mean your business intelligence department will be replaced or your research department, but it does mean that you can start to predict more accurately and get learnings that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to get um, from a human doing the analysis alone. Uh, as far as really understanding how that all happens, it's not necessary. And as we learned in the interview with Paul, we actually already are using AI and we might not even know it. So when you upload a CRM list of your sales team's primary targets, Facebook can create a lookalike audience, and that is based on pattern recognition that it has built into its services. So that improves your targeting, it improves your fulfillment and engagement rate, and that's something where it didn't take the person running the campaign to actually understand what Facebook is doing on the back end in order for the marketer to reap the benefits of higher click-through rate, higher quality leads, um, and faster time to lead. So I think that a base understanding always gives you the fuel you need to be inspired. So I would totally recommend that people check out marketingaiinstitute.com and do some of their free trainings. Um, there is also this great book that I read a few years ago. And even though it's a few years old, it's still hyper relevant. And it is called AI for Marketers. It is by... Christopher S. Penn, and I might get the number of pages wrong, but if I recall correctly, it's like 100 pages. Like it's, it's a very quick read, or maybe I just enjoyed it so much. <laughs> I finished it in one afternoon, and um, I highly recommend starting there because again, whenever you have that base understanding of just what are the benefits and the uses, it can really inspire more ideas. Excellent, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so on the phone today, in addition to Cheryl, Cheryl is our co-host for our Leader Generation podcast. We also have Tom Madrilay, host 
who is one of our lead digital strategists, and Abby, who is our digital coordinator, Abby Holbrook. So thank you all for joining. Um, Tom, did you have any questions coming in that you think would be good to address as a group? Yeah, it's kind of alongside of Cheryl's question, um, where there's a lot of sophistication and potential, you know, there's a, an AI project could get extensive pretty quickly. Um, from your experience, are there any applications of AI and marketing that you think are uh, within reach for a lot of businesses um, and or your customers um, in the near term? Yeah, so I think where you should start is where a couple of, I guess, qualities intersect. So one, where you might be spending the most time manually, and it, it hurts. Like the easiest way to get buy-in, especially from other people who might be involved in the decision-making process, is that the pain is real and the pain needs to be addressed. So a good example would be reporting and insights. Um, typically, you can get an out of the, I mean, you can get an out of the box tool that can leverage the data that you're already collecting from reporting and start to automate those insights. Uh, we actually have at Tenlo a client who built a tool that does that specifically for the CPG industry. It's called Bedrock Analytics. And it takes the data that you already have about your products and empowers the sales team with the exact insights they need to sell into more retailers and really win at the shelf. So that's a great example of, you know, again, the sales team does not need to be experts in AI. It's super complicated um, on the back end of Bedrock Analytics, but it's something that is already happening at a lot of food companies. They're preparing all these presentations, they're trying to manually collect this data. And that's an example of, you know, you can plug that in configure it. It still takes some, obviously some people strategy and process to get that first iteration up. Uh, but then once it's up, you know, let the machine learning algorithms learn what's best um, based on patterns and behavior. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's great. Okay. Here, here is another question I'm seeing is um, how can we use AI to improve or speed up a test and learn process. And I'll give a little context here in case um, any of our participants didn't hear the entire episode. Um, Paul, there was a conversation and Paul mentioned how um, sometimes people think that marketers need to have all the answers and that's not true and that marketing is trial and error and test and learn. Um, and so how can we use AI within that process? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So there are, you know, when we first start testing, we like A-B test and we try and isolate variables. And um, when you're looking at not being able to control the target audience, when you're looking at running several tests all in a row, if you implement an AI tool, then what the real strategy is, the people power is, do I have the right assets? Am I testing different enough messages? And have I created experiences and drive traffic to the experiences that I believe will convert? But then let the algorithm, you know, multivariate testing powered by machine learning is a great example, um, run that test for you. It will expedite the insights that you get um, and it will also increase the accuracy. So we, as you know, people can really only see like, here's what I want to test A, here's what I want to test B, and I know I want to isolate these things. And something that Paul said in the interview that I thought was kind of funny is that we have to accept that we at marketers kind of suck at strategy. And um, yeah, that's true. I mean, we don't have the capacity for machine learning. That's why we teach machines. Um, but we do have the capacity to teach and we do have the capacity to create and that's what's important but you know using multivariate testing machine learning power multivariate testing you know gets us away from this real standard you know a b isolation thing that could take months and months especially if you don't have a lot of traffic <laughs> um so whenever you stand it up you know machine learning does require data 
it does require a lot of traffic in order to work best, but at least you're not leaving it up to guessing as to whether or not you selected the right variables uh, to test. Um, another one I was just thinking about, and this is kind of in line with that question, but I also see it here is how can I show that AI is better than not AI? Uh, that is fairly straightforward. I would, again, pick an application where AI is already running in the background, and that you can do like a simple test. Run it, you know, without using a built-in uh, method. So we also talked about in the interview, LinkedIn Navigator. And so if you were to manually go look for people who match your criteria in LinkedIn, how long does that take you? What's the quality of your results versus using LinkedIn Navigator and the algorithms that run in the background of that? Now, how long are you looking? What's the quality of your results and compare? And then you know, bring that forward to other people on your team to sort of show when we take the time to test new applications and leverage this existing technology, here's an example of results we can expect in terms of quality and then also time savings. Tessa, if I could add to that, I think that there's, I think that's a great example from LinkedIn. And another place we see it as Mark goes all the time is with Google ads where they introduced smart bidding several years ago. And of course, a lot of people were concerned about it naturally that, um, you know, what, what are these AI powered optimizations and bidding strategies exactly doing? Are they in the best interest of the client or ourselves and, and not the platform? But um, over time, they we, we've always ran, we, and to, to this day, we still run them against our own, um, our own prescribed bidding strategy, but we'll introduce an experiment with target CPA or uh, target ROAS, and we'll see which one, we'll still have them running concurrently and choose the best one that, that's getting the results we want, but it is still testing it against a, a more manual strategy. Yeah, I love that recommendation. It's another great way to show value and, and learn as you go too. Uh, Cheryl, do you have any other questions coming in? Um, well, this one's coming from me, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, um, what I want to know is, you know, you had this great conversation with Paul, what was your favorite moment in that episode or the key takeaway that you would want to share with every, um, everyone that, that you think was most beneficial coming out of this episode? Yeah, that is challenging. Uh, there were so many, what I, what I liked the most is that he gave exact examples of application that we as marketers can all try today. So I would highly recommend if you haven't heard the episode, go to tenlo.com, click podcast, and on the Paul interview, you'll see the list of those applications. Um, I actually wrote down the one that I wanted to test on some of our enterprise clients. And he also gave a good metric for seeing if this tool fits for you, but it's uh, Mad Kudo and it's an AI powered um, lead scoring platform. So that's been like a thorn in my side is this manual scoring guessing game. Uh, I know you always need a, a starting point, you know, test and learn, but I feel like we spend a lot of time trying to pick numbers and uh, Mad Kudo will automate that process for you. And again, probably teach you something that you didn't know, because kind of back to the, you know, we as marketers may not be the best people to set that strategy. Um, so I'm really excited to try that. I really appreciated that he gave examples and shared with us about the free training that's on Thursdays, uh, you know, just half hour webinars where People can start to get that base understanding and really get inspired. So let's do one last question on this topic. And um, Abby, let me know if you 
see anything that comes in that we should end with. Yeah, um, absolutely. So we do actually have a couple of things coming in uh, into the chat. So this one's good. Um, how much should we spend? How much should we spend on a like time on AI? How much money? Anything in between? Yeah, that's a really common question. I feel like if you approach clients or as someone who's on the brand side, when you approach your senior executive team, they will ask, well, what's the ROI on this? And I think the best place to get started is not to pitch AI. Like, don't pitch it separately. So if your spend isn't or shouldn't be to start anything in addition to where you're at. If you're taking a first step, look at the platforms you're already using. And are they powered by any machine learning and algorithms that you can start to test and simply do what you're doing today, but a little differently? The second step is now that I have seen some value and I've learned, um, are there applications that I can license? So that's where the cost is going to come in. But as Paul mentioned in our interview, a lot of them have free trials or demos. So you can use that free trial to start to build out that ROI calculation. But I think something that, you know, with people being slightly intimidated by AI that I would try to avoid is saying like, you know, we're going to test AI. It's like, no, AI is empowering you as a marketer to deliver better results. So start there with what are the outcomes and then start with what's in front of you to drive those outcomes and then use that as proof points to build up to show the ROI over time. And I think that's one great point from this episode is that Paul gave a lot of great starting points for some marketer who wants to try AI and start using it, but isn't sure what that entry point is. And he gave lots of examples of where you can start. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree. And if you're like, well, I don't know if we are using it. I don't know if my agency is. Ask. I'm sure Tom will be able to tell you. Because <laughs> I mean, you, um, you, again, you might not even know you've started and maybe you already have bigger ideas and you might already have the proof you need to license additional application and expedite some other processes. All right. Well, that is all for today's office hours. Thank you for everyone who joined live and submitted questions. We will be doing this every other week. So on the weeks that we don't have a Tenlo Radio episode, if you have a specific topic that you would like to discuss, um, you can go ahead, visit the office hours page on tenlo.com and submit that. And if we get it scheduled, we will get back to you to let you know when that will be airing. Um, otherwise, register for future office hours and we will talk to you soon in the future.